Meteors crashing from the sky, the most amazing character of all time and easily one of the best soundtracks so far I've ever heard in Final Fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Preach and welcome to Final Fantasy V. This is the final base game of the entire franchise for us to play. Yes, a conclusion to a journey that began over a year ago is happening before we get into the side projects like the sequels and the you know tactics and things like that is where we're going later but final fantasy 5 finally began and i was nervous and i i kind of kept we, we <sighs> mixed again like the ones that we left to the end like 15 and 13 and all these kind of ones and two were the ones where people like ah, i love it or hate it love it or hate it love it or hate it and definitely a response from you guys of like, I expected you to hate this more, and maybe it's not that bad, and maybe I should replay this game. All these kind of mixed views are great, and exactly why coming in blind and having a non-biased opinion of having played it as a child, but maybe you didn't understand things, or like expectation of what the game will hold if you're excited for a new sequel to come out, don't hold sway over me to look at it in a more objective manner. Let's get into Final Fantasy V. I've said previously, I think Final Fantasy VI has one of the best introductions to a video game ever. It's really up there. It's short and sweet and sets a ton of atmosphere and precedent. You've got slavery going on. You've got the Imperials and how they work. You've got magic and mystery. You've got this really insane atmosphere of a town where the people and the populace are terrified of what's going on. Interesting characters you want to know more about, and it accomplishes this within the first 10 or so minutes. And it does it in this old retro style where they couldn't have just a cutscene just blaring it out on top of you uh, and dialogue and exposition throwing at you. You've got to pull it out of the actions that's happening with these pixelated characters. Final Fantasy V is right up there. It's super good. You've got this mysterious thing going on with a king and his daughter and he's taking a dragon he's got something's wrong with the wind then meteors are crashing and one thing that was really cool is very quickly uh, moving on from four which i still rate extremely highly is they they understood that traversing the world shouldn't be a chore and by this point in the franchise waiting a long time for some method of travel to make itself appear uh, apparent isn't really worthwhile, especially after two, when it's like almost commercial public transport routes, things like that. You start on a chocobo. So the main setting so far is the king, uh, king of Tycoon, who is in charge of the wind crystal. I, I imagine there are kingdoms all over the place in charge of different crystals. The wind crystal is something's going wrong. The wind's dying down. So he visits there. And as he gets there, the, the crystal shatters into pieces. His daughter, Lenny is like please don't go please don't go father please don't go but he goes and then he disappears and then shortly after we meet our main protagonist bart again i am always sort of dreading what names they'll come up with in the final fantasy franchise you know cecil i'm expecting Derek and tony to turn up next to these sort of extravagant fantasy names uh, but Bart is the character that we have. I decided not to change his name because it makes it easier for me to reference back. But in a spiritually, my dude, <laughs> spiritually will be my dude, uh, where we quickly start bumping into other characters. We find an, an old man who's lost his memory. Uh, and th those are going to be our three characters. Although, interestingly enough, Bart is kind of this lone wolf with his chocobo. I think his chocobo is called Boko. Boko the chocobo um who he, he finds them near the meteor unconscious and he's and they're like we need to go to the wind shrine and all the old man's got no memories like i'm pretty sure i also need to go to the wind shrine and bart's is like well you guys have look good luck with that <laughs> i'll see you later uh he's got this like mad max lone wolf wolverine f uh, v vibe to him he's like yeah okay you guys go do that you seem good but then we find out and again it's how it's told through the stories he's like deep down he's a good person and as bart's moves away from letting the old man with no memory and this uh, girl go on away and remember it's still back in the era so the girls are a little bit damselly in distress oh i can't uh and now she needs a big strong man to come and help her because he has a change of heart boko kind of squawked quiz at him like you should probably go and help these guys out as the adventure unfolds the first thing i noticed by this point this soundtrack is top tier, like really good, especially the battle theme goes hard. It is the remastered version, 
but it's got like metal riffs to it. It's bassy. It's just so good. I was like jamming around. Like this is this soundtrack is fire. This is actually is so good. And that has continued on in all the zones we've been to is having really good themes. Nothing strange like the boingy boingy theme we had in Final Fantasy 13 going on. Uh, eventually, of course, we do do the wind dungeon. He goes back, he meets up with them. Um, and then uh, due to the tutorial of the first town, I found out about the job system. This is a very big deal for Final Fantasy V. Uh, because they are still trying to work out how people can have choice in how their characters work, but with some twist and some quirk that isn't just a talent tree. What they don't want is the characters to be set in stone as to what they are, at least at this stage in Final Fantasy's development. They want the player to customize their party as much as humanly possible, but they also want it to be not just like there's a mage talent tree and there's a melee talent tree. They don't want that either. So they've tried lots of different things since Final Fantasy 2. And now they've come up with a system which is very reminiscent of Final Fantasy 2 in that you will assign the jobs to the characters. And we do this after we get to the wind crystal and we collect job crystals, which gives us a bunch of choices of different jobs. It's like black mage. These are all the basic ones. Black mage, white mage, thief, etc. Um, <laughs> but now they've come with a new twist on it. And I was worried about this, especially because we recently played two. I was like, oh no, am I going to have to like level up all the different jobs again? And that in Final Fantasy 2, if you didn't see that playthrough, I ended up having magic on everybody and having to constantly level it up because it was just too useful to not have that. Like you kept coming up against melee immune mobs practically. So it's like, even though this my guy's a, a warrior berserker, they kind of need to be able to cast magic just to counteract the practicalities of the game. Like, the game's just... They, some of the enemies just don't take melee damage, so you can't just have AFK people. Um, so I was very worried about this, but in fact, it's kind of cool. Uh, the way this system will work is you can swap jobs on the fly. You can do that outside of combat. You can change anybody's job to whatever you want. So if you've got a thief and you suddenly need a healer, you can swap them to white mage outside of combat. And the spells you buy from the shops are just universally accessible. So you don't need to buy Cure for one character and Cure for another. As long as you know Cure, it just works. It just works nicely. And so um, what you learn instead is a trait. Some sort of um, specialization that goes with that job. So for example, my uh, thief, if I make my thief a white mage for a period of time... They will level up White Mage. And, be, and once they've learned that skill, they have it. And then they will learn a White Mage trait or a Thief trait, such as Detect Hidden... A Thief trait would be Detect Hidden Passages. If later on I want to swap my Thief over uh, to, say, a Ranger or a, white, a Red Mage or a Blue Mage or whatever, I could still give them the trait that they learn from being a Thief. So you can absolutely have a, um, a Warrior who can cast heals. Because they did some white mage earlier on. And I can also give them a trait to discover hidden passages and things like that. Or to guard if they were a warrior at one point. I can have my mages learn guard. Wouldn't be super effective, obviously. But I could do that. And I was like, okay, this opens up a ton of possibilities for where we want to go. And possibly early game, messing around with a lot of different jobs and learning different traits is probably a good idea. And I, there's one character that I have that's kind of floating. We'll get to it later in the story who's been a blue mage, a white mage, a black mage, uh, and they're learning all different kinds of traits and skills, so I have access to these. But I'm probably going to do it with all the characters. Either way, um, the the world is going bad, and we find out, of course, that um, darkness is returning. You can absorb the crystals. Uh, we hear this from Daddy. Daddy King, uh, Lena's dad, the king, appears... And then disappears into a vortex, uh, like a purple vortex. He's like, he's not dead. Something's going on, and she she attests that he's not dead. Uh, so that's go that's a thing. And then, so I assigned my character as a warrior. That's the classic play I'm going to do. Um, I decided that I did not want uh, Lena. Uh, the princess to be the healer. Uh, back in the day, they did the se seemingly push all the ladies to be the healers of the party. Nope, she's a thief. I want my princess to be a thief, so I've made her a thief. Then there's Galoof. We learn the name Galoof. And I know this name from somewhere, and it's killing me that I can't remember where it's from. It's probably from Final Fantasy XIV. The old man. I was like, you know what would be funny, and this was really just a joke, is if we make Galoof a monk. Because every job you switch them to gives them a different outfit. 
And Galoof as the old man ends up shirtless and swole and ready to go. I was like, that'd be really funny. He's the most badass character ever. He does double to triple everybody else's damage. He has AoE from the very start. Needless to say, if we don't show every clip in this, Galoof has carried every boss fight on his back and he is absolutely giga swole. He is the man. And we learn later that he's definitely someone of importance because a guard refers to him as Lord Galoof. Whether he's like the over supermind king or whatever, I don't know yet, but he's Lord Galoof, the shirtless old man who beats everything to death. It even got to the point where monks were so powerful. At one point, I changed two characters to monks because they could just clear everything in seconds. They are so dominantly powerful and make my warrior, who I've purchased weapons for, to be the strongest he could be, barely get near his capable damage. Uh, it's just unreal. Like, I'm so happy that we did this with Galoof. Um, we then get sort of really cool atmosphere is that we end up in a pirate cove this happens a bit earlier um again you can get hit with so much i will say this in the first two hours of the game you get the chocobo movement which everybody can ride so you super fight we get a boat and then we end up with a dragon and we have free world roaming from like the get-go of the game it's pretty awesome uh, as we stumble upon the pirates um there's a very weird thing going on but i guess they were having fun with it where we meet the pirate lord um who blatantly looks exactly like lena and i was very uh, uh, even seeing them appear on screen i was like why have they done two characters that both have pink hair because they usually try to distinguish the characters a little bit more than that and i was like oh they're probably related in some way and this storyline plays out for a little too long for my opinion is that they have the same pendant on like the royal seal um their sister uh, there's revelations in the castle. It's like, oh, your your sister who fell overboard at sea at one point uh, when she was young. <laughs> and it's like, okay, can, are we going to address this? And they do. Thankfully, they do come up with it. And Lena's like, I'm pretty sure we're sisters. Like, no, no, we're not. Uh, we're not sisters. Uh, okay. You, I mean, you both definitely know your sisters. Uh, and this is happening. But one grew up as a pirate. One grew up in royalty. Uh, which is fine. Uh, it's fine. It's like uh, Sabine and Edward sort of divergence that happened in 4, so they're kind of playing a little bit further with that idea. Uh, but they both want to rescue their dad, uh, which was great. So we ended up with the ship, which is carried by, and I'm going to forget the name. People are going to get really mad at me. It's Sillard? Sillard? Something like that. Uh, it's because there's no wind anymore, right? So how are the boats moving? Well, this boat is taken by Nessie, because uh, that's what I refer to them as, Nessie. But they have emotional impact as Nessie gets sucked down into a whirlpool uh, and uh, it's devastating and then comes back for one last hurrah to save the party with the last of Nessie's strength saves the party and then wanders off and there's a screech and tears are happening. I'm like, still didn't die on screen. Pretty sure they're going to come back later. Pretty sure they're going to come back later. But our objective is clear, is something's wrong with the crystals. So we're going to, we visit the Water Kingdom, we're going to visit the Fire Kingdom, uh, and let them know you have to stop siphoning power from the crystals, which is what's going on. Is each kingdom is using the power of their crystals to provide for the people. So the water, pe the water crystal is pouring water, so it's powering, it's, you know, it's powering things through wind uh, turbines. Uh, they're all got fresh water, they're all very happy. Uh, similar with the fires, they're nice and warm and things like that. Is is all because of their crystal, and we're like, you have to stop doing that, uh, which ends up with the crystals ultimately being shattered. But it also gives us more job stones. Kind of a win. Every time a crystal shatters, we get a bunch more job stones. Shout out to the job stone <laughs> that you can't access, and why the developer did this is because he's an absolute menace to society. Is in the far, I think it's the uh, water crystal when it shatters. Is there's a job stone lying on the floor and it's inaccessible. You can't reach it. And I was like, why would you do this? This is infuriating. That could be something really cool. It might be like the best class in the game. You just you just feel like you're getting screwed. Although obviously you can't get it, but it just feels you like you're screwed over completely. It's the worst. It's the absolute worst. After our first play session, definitely something I uh, want to talk about is how difficult this game is. This game pulls no punches at all. So far, we have not had to grind at least the main story of any of the Final Fantasy games. And we have played everything except 11, which is an MMO, so it's not part of this journey that we're on. 
I died a lot uh, to these bosses. They are no joke. Like, absolutely no joke. I was being pretty casual about it, uh, but there was no joke, which means I had to knuckle down and really maximize gameplay. The ultimate battle I've had so far was against Shiva. Shiva has been locked away be beneath the castle in Tycoon. Uh, you can find Shiva and you have a battle with her. And then ultimately, if you win it, you gain Shiva as a summon and she'll do Diamond Dust, which is great. Uh, I have a summoner, so we're summoning a bunch of people. Uh, we've got Fat Chocobo summon and things like that, uh, which was great. But the battle with Shiva, I think it took five tries uh, to do it. Uh, considering we're three hours into the game, a boss that takes me, with my experience, five tries is not a joke. Uh, we had to min-max the hell out of this uh, to the point where the, the gameplay was keep galoof alive uh, as much as possible everybody else can sacrifice their own lives just to keep galoof alive um and that kind of paid off because the ads are extremely dangerous there's shiva and three ads that have a ton of hp we're talking hundreds of hp um which and then leaving down to shiva and ultimately i ended up with just the healer and galoof just alternating healers after managing to get the three ads down just one heal on galoof one heal on the healer um, and just desperately trying to overcome the fact that we have like 200 HP and the boss regularly hits for over 100. Uh, so it was potions, elixirs, everything just to keep Galoof alive so he could just keep pummeling into Shiva. And I think on a, if, if we would have had one more turn where Shiva would have attacked, we would have lost. Uh, but we managed to bring Shiva down. And I was like, this is great. I'm all, I, I say this is great because I think this is something that turns a lot of players off is the difficulty curve is too strong. And it's like, okay, I need to go and grind now. And I, I'll tell you one thing. It's become more and more apparent to me why every Final Fantasy game, the people who are watching from memory, so they played it as a kid or they played it a few years ago, always, always says it's time to go grind to me. I see that message thousands of times and I've never done it. But I totally get why. Because very regularly you're coming up against encounters and unless you're ready to min-max and sort of do progress, progress pull these bosses... The solution is you just need more levels and therefore people just go and grind. It totally fits. It absolutely fits. And I, I fully understand why people went and ground, gr grinded levels out as either when they were younger or they last played. It's because these fights, you have to be pretty decent to get around some of these encounters if you're meeting them naturally. And until you're like at the point where you've played it thousands of times and you're speed running it, right? So you know every intricacy of every single boss, which you obviously don't know in your first playthrough then it totally makes sense why that's happened. So far, I'm sticking to my guns. I have not had to um, grind at all. I have overcome everything. Uh, maybe this is the one, though, because these fights are really tough. I, I gave Shiva an example there, but we had three or four boss fights, which were similar uh, to in nature to these things. So we'll see. But so far, Final Fantasy V is right up there. Really cool game. Very much enjoying it. Uh, and I'll check back in as we push further into the game. Welcome to a new journey. I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.